All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto your elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch, coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit. And Lord's willing, this lesson here is edifying. And this lesson I plan on doing right now is going to be a response to um, a beautiful testimony. One of the beloved brothers, I believe he said um, he's in either Pensacola, or Minnesota, and uh, Salakia, brother, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it was, if you were listening to this, to this lesson, um, couldn't quite clear exactly um, where you said you were located. But um, I know I know the brothers YouTube page is um, or the brothers, the camps page, you know, was um, prophets, prophets of Babylon. You uh, know, those brothers aren't necessarily in Great Millstone, but they follow the doctrine. They follow the doctrine. And that brother made he made mention of that in his testimony that he had done, you know, and I'll post the link in the description box. I definitely encourage whoever's listening to this lesson to um to to check it out i'll even repost the video on the on the great millstone um you know our, our, our camp page as well you know because on the brother's testimony was um was very heavy it was very heavy man you know and i'm not really gonna just repeat his testimony and such man but uh brother call all your by shimmy how shy because um what that brother had shown what that brother had shown um was faith when death was faced in front of him, you know, and when you listen to the brother's testimony, you're going to understand exactly what I mean. And uh, this is something that a lot of us haven't been faced with. You know what I'm saying? We haven't really been faced with death or anything like that and, and calling on the name of the Lord when death is faced in front of us. And we are approaching a time here within the very near future that we're going to have to choose. We've already chosen, but, you know, when Esau starts implementing this jab a lot more and making making this mandatory to get, you know, in order to work and such. And when he implements this, this, this chip, all right, a lot of our, our faith and a lot of our true intentions are really going to be shown here within the last few days. And the testimony that this brother had was just a mere example of stuff that we're all going to be faced with sometime within the near future. And, um, and through the spirit, you know what I'm saying? Through the spirit, I commend this brother for holding fast his faith and holding fast his integrity all the way into the end. And the Lord had um, delivered the, that brother out of the hands of death as pertaining to the testimony. The word literally saved this brother from death. All right. And um, pretty much, you know, the brother was held at gunpoint. When you listen to the message, I'm not going to just go in deep detail but he was pretty much held at gunpoint you know he was taken hour and a half outside of the city due to some stuff that his brother was involved in you know what i'm saying and the only way that this brother was saved those people those those, those um those male factors those criminals all right one of them had a gun to his head and was ready to smoke this brother but the man in the front seat you know demanded to look at this brother's phone and when he looked at this brother's phone he saw his YouTube page and saw the works that the brother had done. All right. He saw the works that those brothers was doing and saw that he wasn't full of he wasn't full of shit. And he was a man of his word because he told those men that they asked him what he did. And he said, I, I preach the Bible, man. That's all I do. And the spirit had that man go to his phone. And the first thing he went to was YouTube. Who does that anyway? Which shows you it was the spirit that was working through that man in the front seat. You know, he just straight, strictly went to his YouTube page and then he saw the testimony, man. And, and within seeing that, the spirit moved those men, you know, namely that one man to, to, sit, to, to hold back his hands from shedding innocent blood. And again, as it was stated earlier, man, he was saved by the word of his testimony. And this leads me to this precept here in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, the 11th verse. I don't plan on having this lesson too long, but I do want to do a response to it. And as I was listening to it yesterday, the spirit was poking at me to, to talk about this, you know, because we're all approaching the hour of temptation, which is very soon. It even says it in Revelation 3 that this hour is going to try even the whole earth. 
Okay, so we're all going to be we're all going to come across situations where our faith is going to be tried. Our faith is tried daily and we get it because we fight the flesh daily, but it's going to amplify. And as it amplifies and as we have these victories in the spirit over the flesh, the Lord is going to reward us particular ways like this brother was rewarded to keep his life, continue to do the work and also too, to do this beautiful testimony to lift the congregation's faith. To know that if we keep this word all the way into the end, the Lord is going to fight for us. And like I said, this leads me to Revelation, the 12th chapter and the 11th verse. And it reads, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Now, when you read this here in Revelation, the 12th chapter, namely, this is talking about Esau Edom. All right. Namely, this is talking about Esau Edom and his beast system today. All right, which is headed by America, which is the whore that sits upon the beast. All right, and then you have those vassals, all right, that are that that America's in league with, all right, namely within NATO. And then the EU is also involved. So you have this whole beast infrastructure that's headed by Esau Edom, namely, all right, which is coming to attack us at the end of the day. It wants us brought down, all right, and namely, it's headed it's headed by Satan, all right. But we see with these devils plan on doing with you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right? We see the agenda that they're putting out against us. We see how they're defeminizing the so-called black man and masculating the so-called black woman. And one can say, well, no, who's, who's to say these people are doing this? Well, they're putting this energy out here, all right? Even starting with these wicked elites, all right? They're funding all these different things. These Chaldeans are funding this beast, all right? And funding this beast, they're pumping the money into the media. They're pumping the money into the foods that's killing us, which they're putting these places in our neighborhoods and such. Ultimately, it's to come at you, Jakes. And the majority of our people are going to be taken in these devices, except the elect. And the only way that these men were able to overcome this system, this devil that's coming against us, is through the blood of our Lord Yahweh Shai. And when we out here on the hedges, the highways, prophesying, all right, that's a clear indicator to show whose blood, whose blood, I'm sorry, that Yahweh shot. I'm going to put it like this. I write a reword it like this. These men that you see out here constantly putting up the shows, constantly on the highways and hedges, doing his work in sincerity and in truth. It's an indicator to show you who's being covered by Yahweh Shai's blood. Now, Lord's willing, we endure all the way into the end. But we see the men of the Lord. We see the servants out here fulfilling their lots. All right. Hey, it's even written up in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter and the 14th verse. It says this gospel is going to be preached into the, all the corners of the earth. Then the end shall come. So these servants are out here giving the testimony of Yahweh, which is the spirit of prophecy. And those that are giving this testimony and those that believe in this testimony are those that are going to be saved. So namely, when you read this here in Revelation, the 12th chapter, the 11th verse, all right, it's going into how we've overcame this devil. OK. Now, when you continue here in this verse, because I'm using this brother's testimony, even as a small victory in this whole big picture in Revelation 12 and 11, because the point that I want to go into is the second part of verse 11, where it says, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. And as I mentioned in regards to this brother, all right, when he was in the car with those men, they was ready to kill him. They drove literally an hour and a half outside of the city just to kill this brother and, and, and take his body and bury his body somewhere in no man's land. And when I listened to it, I almost almost brought tears to my eyes, man. You know, it just made me want to just constantly glorify the names of Yahweh while Yahweh shy. And also... It makes us fear, you know, shows that we got to fear the Lord. And if we keep those, if we, if we keep those at the forefront, serving the Lord and fearing the Lord, man, he's only going to fight for us. And he's only going to deliver us like this beloved brother was delivered. And again, he was delivered by the word of his testimony. Okay. If he didn't have the testimony, he would not have been delivered, man. All right. And it was happened. It happened that way. It was written that way in the story for that exact reason to show you for all these people that like to scoff, for these people that like to scorn, for these people that tell you you don't need to go out on the highways and you don't need to be on YouTube 
to to be a prophet. And namely, these people are saying that because they're cut, because the servants are putting that work out. And we believe through faith that YouTube was made namely for this word to get out. All right. Because this is the most important thing that's happening on the planet Earth right now. All right. The gospel of Yahweh Shai being preached and YouTube is the main catalyst that's being used to distribute this word. So we believe through faith. YouTube is a catalyst for this word to come out. The Lord used YouTube for his word to come out because if that was the case, YouTube wouldn't be the source that be used. All right. So for you people that are out here that'll say you don't need to be on YouTube, do this, that and the third. OK, well, if this brother went by y'all's logic. He would be gone. He would be done. Which shows you to fear the most high. And I did a lesson. I did a lesson a few days ago. All right. And the lesson that I did a few days ago. Bear with me one sec. The lesson I did a few days ago was titled refraining from your lot is very terrible and it could lead you to your demise. If this brother didn't have the testimony. If he wasn't if he was sitting back and had the mindset that a lot of these lazy people out here have. In regards to proclaiming themselves to be prophets of this, that, and third, but you don't have no works to follow. All right, if this brother would have had the mindset of these other guys, he would have been gone. And let's just get down to the nitty gritty. Let's let's just call a spade a spade. Let's just call a spade a spade. Because he said he wasn't in Great Millstone, but he follows the doctrine of the apostles. And he even said it. He listened to the apostles and he believes in, in the words that those men said. And what did the apostles say? What is, what is the decree Apostle Tahar put out? All right. To make sure that we're doing our shows. Okay. And this is for the prophets. This is for us that, that know and understand our lots that are prophets. Now, you've got certain brothers that might not do as many videos as other brothers. But, you know, they might have a different portion in the ministry. That's why I did my lesson going into refraining from your, for, for refraining from your lot. You know, if you refrain from your lot, it's terrible. Now, let's look at the prophets. Knowing what our job is to do, and that's to prophesy. So we refrain from prophecy that could lead us to our demise. And like I said earlier, let's say this brother was following IUIC's doctrine and that happened. Let's say this brother was following ISUPK's doctrine or any of these other camps that really don't push being out on the highways and doing the work. Let's just be honest. If he was in that car with those men and he asked and, you know, obviously the Lord can do anything. But for that man in the front seat, if he was to ask that brother, hey, let me see your phone, man. And look at YouTube and just see folly. See dancing in the club at a Passover. Proclaim yourself to be a servant of the Lord, but you're recording yourself in this environment with booties shaking and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? We all know what would have happened. You know, it was very spiritual why this happened and when it happened. And it shows you how important it is to be blameless because that brother was delivered because he was blameless and the ministry was blameless. And he was delivered by the word of his testimony, man. So call Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that the spirit had placed us where we're at. Call Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. He blessed us under the leadership and tutelage that we're under. And through the leadership and tutelage that we're under with our apostles and elders, teachers that are above us that constantly push doing the work as an example. When you look at that, you see the fruit of what came from that, man. Life comes from this. Being blameless comes from this. You know. And I didn't plan on making this too long, but I ended off here. I ended off here, man. Bear with me one sec, y'all. Hold on. This is very crucial, man. This is a very crucial testimony that this brother had. And like I said earlier, it almost brought tears to my eyes, man. But this is the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 22. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. All right. So that brother was delivered by the Lord's mercy. And we hope that we're delivered from the Lord's mercy. But what was the ultimate seal for the Lord's mercy? What did he do? To put a stamp on his mercy. He bruised his son. 
He bruised his only begotten son for us. And as his blood was shed, as his blood was poured out, that acts as a covering for the elect to keep us covered, man. All right. And that's his ultimate mercy that he has sent his only begotten son for our sins. And like Paul said in Romans 10 and 9, if you believe on that, you are already saved. When you listen to this brother's testimony, that brother believed. That brother believed, man. And he didn't even he didn't he didn't even sell his brother out who was a who from what it sounded like was involved in some nigga stuff. But he didn't even sell his brother out who was who was on some nigga stuff, man. Kept his integrity. And you see the Lord's going to fight for you. You're going to see his mercies and how his mercy endures forever. We're going to see that. We constantly see it daily because for us, for those of us that are in the know, we wake up. All right. Pray to the Lord. Give thanks unto the Lord. We still have the spirit on us. We still have the spirit to preach for those that are preachers. We still have ears to hear for those that are believers. We still have the ability to give for those that who, whatever your blessing is. Be grateful to, for the fact that you've woken up and you ain't bugged out and you're not sitting here like, oh, man, uh, you know what I'm saying? I can't remember no precepts no more. You know, be thankful every day that we still have the ability to glorify the names of Yahweh while Yahweh Shai, because that is a clear sign to show us that his mercies are enduring and his spirit is still on you. Be thankful that for those that listen to this brother's testimony, be thankful that you've been graced and blessed to hear that testimony. Because we could be anywhere. We could be doing anything. But he chose to have mercy on his elect. And we don't know if we're those men. But like I mentioned earlier, somebody in these days are going to be out here on the highways and hedges going hard for the Lord in the latter days. And guess what? We doing that right now. We doing that. So it's not surprising. It's not surprising for the mercy the Heavenly Father showed on this brother. And like I said earlier, let that move us to fear, man. We need to be performing our lots. We need to be performing our lots. Because in Revelation 12, it says they were delivered by the blood of the lamb from their testimony. From their testimony, which is the spirit of prophecy. That's the testimony of Yahweh Shai. All right. And another word to, for, to prophesy is to preach. All right. If you a preacher, that means you're a prophet. OK. And I read this here in Romans. Nine, I'm sorry. First Corinthians nine. I'll end it off here. I don't even intend on having this lesson this long, but hey, it's, it's just the spirit at the end of the day. Right. But this is first Corinthians chapter nine, verse 16, man. And think of this brother's testimony. This is one of the first precepts that came to mind when I listened to this brother's testimony. And it says, for though I preach the gospel. I have nothing to glorify of for necessity is laid upon me, meaning it's needful to do it. Ain't nothing to glory from in yourself. All right. It's even written. The most I could raise up stones, you know, to the Lord, the most I could raise up stones to, to, to bring us back. He doesn't have to. He, he doesn't. He didn't have to call you. He don't just need you. Now, obviously, if you're the elect, it painted the picture out anyway, man. But we should be looking at it as the Lord don't need us, man. All right. So since we've been given this portion, we should understand the common goal, which is salvation. And the only way to receive the common goal is to do our part within the ministry. Because this is our job and hey, you don't glory from it. Hey, the brother Tazama did a beautiful lesson last week. The priest Tazama did, Tazama did a beautiful lesson going into you don't need no pat in the back for the ministry. All right. We don't need no pat in the back for what we do. That ultimate pat in the back is going to be in the kingdom of heaven. All right. And who, who, first and foremost, Yahweh Shai is going to get his glory first. Yahweh Shai gets all the glory. We don't got nothing to glory of. We give all that glory to Yahweh Shai, man. Because without him, we're done. We're completely done. So you don't need no pat in the back in the ministry. We're going to get the ultimate pat in the back by the most important person to ever exist. And that's going to be when we receive those crowns. We receive the new bodies when we sit right next to Yahweh Shai in, in, in thrones. We don't need it right now. We don't got nothing to glory in right now, man. All right. Now, obviously, you know, you, you want to esteem a brother. 
Hey, man, that was a good lesson. You was in the spirit. That's cool. And you even monitor how much you do that. But ultimately, man, we got nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon us. And then what did Paul continue to say? Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. And what does woe mean? It means dread, judgment, war, death. All right. A terrible thing can be upon us if we don't if we don't fulfill our lots. All right. And with us being the prophets. Terror and dread come upon us and look at this brother's testimony as an example. If he wouldn't have preached the gospel, it would have been woe. It would have been woe unto him. But call Halal Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Call Halal Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai that the spirit moved that man in that front seat. He moved that male factor in that front seat to say, let me look at your phone. And looked at his YouTube and saw the testimony. And I'm going to say this too, and I end it off here. Hey Amen. The Lord could destroy all three of those guys, right? But at the same time, he could have mercy on that man that looked at that brother's phone. Because when you listen to the testimony, he kept repeating the name of the Lord. When them brothers were saying, we want to give all praise to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai. The brother said he constantly kept replaying it. And he kept asking, what are those names? He kept asking the question, what are those names? And that was the cold, that was one of the cold part, of, part about that testimony. Was brought tears, man. Because the name of the Lord. He inquired about the name of the Lord, man, constantly. And hey, you know, who's to say what, what spirit that guy could be in tomorrow? He could he could just be, you know what I'm saying, just a grimy nigga that's going to be destroyed and such. And rightfully so. But also, too, the Lord could have mercy on that man. And he can have mercy on that man by having him come across this scenario of being in a car with killers, all three male factors, and this one particular one inquired. He could have his brother's page in his mind. He could be on YouTube listening to these brothers and that can move him to change his life and be in paradise remember when Yahweh was crucified man you had the two male factors next to him one of them was righteous both of them were criminals but the one repented and inquired to the Lord right before he died and then the other one was just a nigga but when I was listening to the testimony it made me think about those male factors because these men were indeed criminals they're male factors but this one in particular right here, he could be delivered, man, or not. But the Lord could do anything, you know. And I believe I talked enough. I believe I talked enough. I believe the point was brought home. And again, I'm going to I'm going to post the brother's testimony in the description box. Also be uh, be on alert because it will be posted um, on our main page. It will also be posted on my page as well. You know, GMS Judgment is here. You know what I'm saying? And let's continue to do these good works. Okay? Let's continue to do these good works and let's continue to move with faith and believe that the Lord is here for us no matter what the circumstances are. Like he was here for the, for, the, for this beloved brother, you know, in horrible times. So I'm going to end it off on that. Lord's willingness, the lesson was edifying. Lord's willing, it was comforting. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and sincerity. Shalom.